set out, but here we go for the recurve men's team bronze medal match. So the guys taking center stage now here in Shanghai as we do get set for the men's team bronze medal match, Korea facing the Ukraine. And this is a kind of a surprise because Team Korea usually makes it to the gold medal match, but um, it's been kind of a rough ride for Team Korea. Some, some teams that usually have top competitors in the finals don't have those competitors in the finals. So um, it's, it's been kind of a shakeup to the archery community at this tournament because they're really showing who else is strong out there, who else can compete with the best of the best. And right now Team Korea with Im Dong Hyun in the middle, and uh, that's not Kim Woo Jin on the right. That's the other Kim, and uh, Kim Boobman. Kim, yeah, exactly, Kim Boobman. And Oh Jin Hyuk, and Oh Jin Hyuk on the left. I don't know why Kim Woo Jin isn't shooting, but um, I mean the Koreans have again a strong team that they can just pick any archers and they'll pretty much dominate. Um, but Im Dong Hyun is the veteran on that team. And we're here we have the Ukrainian men's teams. On the left, I believe that's Dmitry Rachov. Exactly, and he's uh, one of the veterans for sure. I remember seeing him competing at the 2004 Olympics. Dmitry, one of the great individual competitors in this sport right now. Markian Ivashko and Viktor Ruban completing the threesome from the Ukraine who will compete here against the Koreans. The Ukrainian team topping Russia this week, then nosing out the Netherlands by one point in the quarterfinals and taking the French to a shootout where they lost in the semifinals. The Koreans, how did they get here? Well, they defeated the Turkish trio, then knocked off the Aussies in the quarterfinals and then lost their semifinal shootoff with the United States. So here we are getting set in the battle for the bronze in the men's team recurve competition korea against ukraine <laughs> the koreans <laughs> shooting at target number one and the ukrainians will be shooting at target number two there's a good look at the wind sock here as the wind starting to pick up a little bit it is but i've also noticed it's changed direction um we saw the wind going from left to right but now we look at the flags and they're pointing to the left which is indicates they're going right to left. Matters not. <laughs> that doesn't matter anyway for <laughs> Im Dong Hyun. And we saw him, he's probably telling his teammate where to aim now because the, again, that uh, practice field is a lot different than the tournament field. Seeing the wind pick up. Oh Jin Hyuk is already adjusting his sight behind uh, Kim Bu Bin. And uh, now the, the flag a little bit more starched. Up. Yeah. Mm. So the wind's starting to swirl and pick up here along the Wangpu River. As Oh Jin Hyuk, who took a silver medal at stage two in Turkey last year, lines up the shot, and fires it, and it's an eight. So a 10 on the liner, and then another eight. So the door opened a little bit for the Ukrainians. Yeah, and they can totally take advantage of this one. Right now we have the 2008 Olympic gold medalist, Victor Ruban, on the line. Very strong shooter, very confident. Nine from Victor Ruban. Ruban. I've had the pleasure of shooting against him and he doesn't waver at all. Um, fortunately, I, I, I... Of course, you didn't blink either, did you? No, I didn't, but uh, again, he's a very strong competitor. So is Dmitro Rachov. Yes, and I've shot against him as well, a very strong guy. Very matter of fact, I've shot against all the Ukrainians that are here. Mark Yanavashko, he's also a, another guy who doesn't show any emotion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever he's doing, whether it's good, whether it's bad, it's always the same, which is kind of what you need in this sport. Just consistency all throughout. He comes up with a nine and they'll win this first set. He comes up with a 10 and they take the first, well, not first set, but at the midway the point the of the first set, they're up by two points. Unofficially. Unofficially. We do have that. Asterisk by the eight. As the Koreans go back to the shooting line and it's a nine. Kim Bowman, 21 years old. Not ranked in the top 100 in the world, but he's surrounded by two great archers. That's a nine from Kim. Again, both of his arrows off to the left, so that's <laughs> definitely the showing the shift in the wind going from left to right to, to right to left. And just over 
Im's shoulder sitting on the stairs is Kim Woo Jin. Sitting this one out, watching his team though and wondering what he could be doing. But 10 more seconds left on the clock for Oh Jin Hyuk. And a nine no. just low. So the Ukrainians need 26 points on these final three arrows of the first set to actually take the first set. And that will not help. A little bit low eight. It's uh, very uncharacteristic for Viktor Ruban, but Ratchoff and uh, Ivashko can definitely make it up. Rachov, who won the bronze medal at the finals no. in individual competition last year in Istanbul, comes up with a nine on that shot. And a nine could potentially tie Korea, depending on what the eight asterisk is called, but a 10 will definitely give them a lead over Korea going into the second end. This and a 10, there you go. Ukraine, yeah. <laughs> Ukraine is leading Korea going into the second end. Is that sort of calculation going through the mind of uh, Mr. Ivashko? Or oh, is no. he just focused <laughs> on the target and shooting the best possible shot he can? He's just focused on not even shooting the best possible shot, but just shooting his shot. If you try too hard, that's again when I say you tie up and you don't perform the shot that you really want to do, but if you just go out there and shoot what you normally shoot, then it's a lot better on you and it's a lot easier for you to shoot tens. But calculating scores. I was going to say, if you start calculating something. scores during the match, you're in yeah, trouble, right? Exactly, yes. Some people do do it and some people get away with it, but um, when you're actually on the shooting line with a time constraint, calculating score is the last thing that's on your mind. So there's the score after the first set of arrows. It's really interesting to see the different team dynamic that goes on on the field of play right now. Team Korea mainly talking to each other while they're on the shooting line. And they can uh, you can see them, they're conversing. But Team Ukraine, they're all standing individually, very apart. They're very secluded. I guess they're really focusing on their own game. So being, it's, it's interesting to see that uh, both of these methods work. So some people ask me, is it better when you're a little bit more social or is it better when you're, uh, when you're a little bit more introverted? But it really doesn't matter. If you're a good shooter, you're a good shooter. And it depends on your personality, I suppose. That as well, for sure. Are you a team player or are you an individual player? Only 110 in that first set for the Koreans, but they start off the second set with a 10. The Ukraine had a pair of 10s in that first set, which spelled the one point difference. The Ukrainians leading by one after the first six arrows, another but there's another 10. I think Korea has found the middle and they're not gonna waiver from that at all. And a nine. All three arrows from the Koreans just a little high, just a smidge high. They could uh, move their sights up just a little bit, but um, right now Team Ukraine, who did have a one point lead going in to the second end. So the Olympic gold oh, medalist sorry, from Beijing. Point. Victor Ruban, 31 years old, an eight with his first arrow. Again, that's very uncharacteristic. Nine from Ratchoff. Again, high. Um, so all arrows that are downrange right now are just high of the 10 ring, or just high of the X. Should say. So the lead may be about to shift back right now, depending. And well, it will. And the lead has shifted. You, uh, Ukraine now trailing Korea by three points unofficially after the first three arrows of the second end. And Duncan with another no. high arrow. Relatively high, I should say.
Now, Mr. Kim, who did medal twice last year in competition here in China. And then eight. Ah. You can see the flags are really starting to pick up and, uh, and flap in this wind that's ever increasing. And right now, from my vantage point, I feel like the temperature is <laughs> dropping just a little bit. So when you have that temperature drop and the, the wind shift, it does make a little bit for uh, 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 an uneasy or an uncomfortable archer. I know Jun Yuk with a nine to finish off that end. Best Ukraine can do now with three tens is tie Korea on that end. Ten points, there's the first step. So a great shot by Victor Ruban. Now Dmitro Rachov, who was ninth in the world championships in Torino last year. Picked up a silver medal in World Cup competition in Ogden. And he's a little high. Ah. Again, I think there's a, a little bit more play on the field, on the field of play um, in terms of wind. We can see one of the wind socks is actually pointed towards the target. So they're shooting in what we call a tailwind. And that's when the wind can actually pick the arrow out of the air and carry it a little bit further than what's intended for the arrow to hit. 10 points for uh, Vashko. And Ukraine now trails by one point behind Korea's 109. Uh, again, a shift in the lead. But like I was saying before, the, the wind is shifting. It's, it's kind of almost swirling down here on the venue. And with the wind being a tailwind and shooting kind of with the wind, you do have potential for shooting high arrows. It's very unpredictable. And it takes a, whole, a lot of experience to be able to shoot confidently and comfortably in that wind. And for those not familiar with the sport, with recurve competition, these arrows, it's not a straight trajectory. No, it's, it's an arc. It's, it arcs, it definitely. And um, it will arc about seven feet in the air, maybe sometimes as high as eight to 10 feet, depending on the bow weight. So your arrow does spend about a second to a second and a half in the air. And believe it or not, that's enough time for the wind to just affect that arrow because it's it's a light arrow. It's made out of carbon, aluminum, uh, sometimes stainless steel or tungsten, depending on the, on the point. Um, but it does get affected quite handily by a wind. Mm -hmm. And also, while we're in China, it's a very moist wind. The humidity is very high here, so any small amount of wind, because of the moisture, because of the humidity factor in this air, it will move the arrow a lot more than whether than than uh, as compared to shooting in a drier place such as let's say Utah or Arizona in the United States, a drier air will not affect your arrows as much. Now, and once again, from this vantage point, this camera angle, that target looks a lot closer than it actually is. It's 70 meters, so it's in the air for a good long while, and there's exactly. plenty of time for the wind to affect that arrow. Yes, exactly. But right now it looks like from what I saw on the flags that the uh, wind has kind of subsided just for now. And Dmitro Rachov will try to take advantage of that, which he does. That's another 10. <laughs> so two 10s <coughs> for the Ukraine to start this third end. They were trailing at the midway point led by one point after the first end. But the Korean team rallied, and you now the Ukraine is doing the same. Uh, team Ukraine definitely coming back strong. Team Korea has got to put their A face, their A game face on, I guess, and um, come back with three tens just to keep their one point lead. That doesn't help. The best Korea can do now is tie where the Ukraine is. With two tens. Mm -hmm. So the closest match that we've seen thus far today here in the recurve competition in Shanghai. Oh, yeah. 10 points. There's a big shot for the Korean team. Kim Bu Bin. <coughs> and Oh Jin Yuk. Eight ah. points left. So Team Ukraine taking a two-point lead so far with the results of this end. Let's see what happens with these next three arrows. So midway through this third end, 
The lead shifts back. Yes, and a two point yes, advantage. Yes, and Victor Ruban trying to pour it on right now. Rachov, who won a team bronze medal at the 28th Olympiad in Athens. Yes, it is. Dead center. 50 points out of 50 points. Ten, uh, five tens in a row. Let's see what Vashko can do. <coughs> so now it's becoming contagious. It definitely does happen when you're on the shooting line. Ten Dude, seconds Vashko. left. With six seconds to go, lets it fly. It's an eight. eight. That breaks the streak of five straight tens. However, however, Korea, the best they can do with three tens is tie Ukraine in raw score. Um, but right now they are, the best they can do is one point deficit for this end. But Im Dong Hin shooting an eight, that's, uh, that's not going to help them at all. Im Dong Hyun has to figure as one of the medal contenders in London this coming August. But he no. shot an eight, and now it's a nine for Bubman. Mr. Kim. And now Mr. O. Oh. O. Oh Jin Yek. Eight points. Wow, so big swing. Tables have really turned. Korea is now behind by five points. But again, Team Ukraine shooting a 58 with an eight. So their third end is, is something spectacular. I see Ojin Yuk shaking his head because he knows that he can do better. And I know the team from Korea can shoot a lot more tens than what they've done so far. The team Ukraine is definitely coming out strong. It's quite a line right there for the Ukrainians, five straight tens before the eight on the final arrow of that third end. And so a strong performance in this back and forth battle. Here in the men's team, bronze medal match, Korea and the Ukraine battling for the bronze. The ships continue to stream by. <laughs> and we get set now as you see the five point lead, 166 to 161 for the Ukrainians over the Koreans. And yes, indeed, it is sunglass weather here in Shanghai. The sun's been out. The breezes were light to start the day, but it picked up as the day and the morning have continued here in China. And Korea shooting first because they are behind in score. So Im Dong Hyun. Ranked fourth in the world at this point. Nine no. points. <coughs> the group from Korea is definitely a lot bigger than I would have than than you normally see, and there's a lot less arrows in the ten ring, which is definitely aiding in their demise right now. Nine points up no. high. That's not going to help them again. And shooting into that, uh, shooting with that wind into that tailwind is not helping the arrows fall into the ten ring. And it's very difficult to judge when to aim a little bit low or when to aim on. There's a ten. You can see on that shot, in this shot perhaps, the windsock has shifted back now. And now the wind seems to be going from left to right. Moments ago, it was from right to left. Exactly, so this swirling wind uh, does not help anybody at all, but Team Ukraine kind of doesn't look like they care about that. Part of the challenge, shooting outdoors, yeah, shooting from 70 meters, and Victor Ruban with a nine, <coughs> just inside the line. This team having the fairly comfortable cushion of five points coming into this fourth end. Rachov with another nine. Consistent shooting from the Ukrainians. Markiana Vashko. Who was 17th at the World Championships last summer in Torino. He comes up with a nine as well. And so the lead is down to four. 
193 to 189. The cumulative total right now with three more arrows yet to go. 10 points. That's yeah. definitely in. <coughs> but is it too little too late? We're seeing Korea trying to mount a comeback for here, uh, for sure. Mr. Kim. Just 21 years old. Nine points. Yo. That was a little bit of a, a longer hold than I normally see from him. 20 seconds left on the clock. Nine points from Yo. Kim Kim. So 217 <laughs> points. Best Ukraine can do is win by six points. But the Ukrainians in the driver's seat right now, especially after that shot by Viktor Ruban. But a great shot of Dmitry Rachov. Who fires a pretty good shot, a nine. And as you've said before, basically all they need to do is hit the target. Well, this one is a little bit more if you if he scores a six or better. So anything inside the blue, they'll win. There it is. That appears to be inside the blue. That is inside the blue. Team Ukraine wins by four points over Team Korea, 221 over 217. Hardly very a happy. victory coming out of the blue, though. The Ukrainians very strong, and so we knew this was going to be a good match, and it was. Mm. Lots of experience going for the Korean team. And a lot of happiness right now. Describe that feeling once it's it's all over and, <laughs> and the pressure's off. Well, sometimes it, sometimes it can be amazing, an amazing feeling. Other times it's like that was supposed to happen. So kind of leaves you empty. No, the, not empty, but like it's like that. That's the way it's supposed to go, and that's what's normally supposed to happen. So I'm okay with that. I'm good. Oh, okay. So I'm satisfied, right? It's not it's not an empty feeling. You can't get an empty feeling winning a medal. I suppose what I meant was uh, if you're on the other side of the equation, maybe oh, yeah. a little bit of an empty feeling sometimes you, you start to wonder what you could have done better um, why did this happen you start to really overanalyze